Okay. Um, cool. If you double tap on the on the screen, uh, if you hover over the screen, you'll see it says click twice to maximize the video. So if you click it twice, you'll see the screen as, as the main uh, screen, and it'll be better uh, to read the code. Once we get into Android Studio, I'll ask you guys to confirm that you can like read the the, the code properly. Okay. Um, so my name is Ivan, uh, and I will be presenting this introduction to Android development. So why why Android? Um, well, uh, it powers three fourths of the mobile of all the mobile devices worldwide. Um, in in the U.S., it's like fifty percent basically. While, while the other fifty percent is iOS. Um, there is a broader range of devices um, like wearables, TVs, uh, infotainment systems that you see on cars, and even weird stuff like microwaves. Um, it is an an open system, so. It is more flexible as to what you can do as opposed to say iOS, which is uh, a closed environment. Um, it, it is easier to publish to Google Play Store. The process is super fast. You can basically do it in an hour. Um, I, I believe that they also like don't charge you anything at all. Uh, if they charge you, it's minimal. Um, and then the native development is it, it provides objectively the best performance uh, when compared to uh, a UI toolkit like Flutter or a framework like React Native. It also gives you more access to all the, the hardware components of your device. Um, so, okay, so first of all, I, I wanna go over the project structure of Android Studio. Um, we'll, we're gonna create a, ooh, we're gonna create a new project. So on Android Studio, go to File and New, and uh, you'll see this window pop up. Um, once you're here, Make sure to select an empty activity. Uh, all these other presets are pretty useful, but they come with a lot of boilerplate code that uh, it's kind of advanced and confusing. Um, so we will be using an empty activity. So not the basic activity, the empty one. And uh, name this however you want. I'll, we're gonna be doing a to-do list app. So maybe something related to that. I'm gonna name this uh, shell to-do. And uh, you don't have to worry about the package name. It's, it's okay if it's example. Uh, yep, and uh, make sure that the, the minimum SDK is, is usually the default is okay. Uh, it will make sure that the app will run in, in the majority of devices, as you can see here. Um, and let's press finish. All right, so you're gonna see this screen once you once you are done. You can see here that Gradle is building. Gradle is the um, tool that Android uses to build and compile the, the code and add all the dependencies and uh, all, all the other good stuff. Um, so is everyone here? Do I have like a good percentage of you in this screen? No, yes? Yeah, cool. All right. Um, so as you can see, uh, we have a folder called uh, the manifest. Uh, here you'll find the Android manifest. This is a, a standard file that is in all the. Oh, it's hard to read the code. Cool, cool. Uh, let me see. Is this better? I should. Um, let me see if this helps. I don't know. Does. I, oh, 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 what did I do? Okay, wait. <laughs> um, yeah, I'll, I'll make it full screen once once we stop looking at this. Um, so wait, I closed a bunch of things. Uh, okay, cool. So the manifest, uh, it is a, a standard file that is found in, in all the Android apps. It is basically how your app communicates to the Android operating system, what it will require, and and the default. Oh, and the, for example, it will tell the OS uh, through what activity to open. Activities are simply uh, the different screens that you will have in your application. Um, it will tell the the I/O like the the OS if you need permissions for the camera. Um, it also has information for Play Store to to list for your app. Um, we won't be doing anything here for now. 
Uh, here's also where you would update the, the launcher uh, icon, but it's just good to know. So in the we have a folder called Java. Uh, like I mentioned before, we're gonna be coding in Java. And uh, here we have uh, different packages. We have this default one where we're gonna be putting our, our scripts. We have by default one called main activity, which is where we're gonna be writing our Java code. Uh, it will contain obviously the, the logic of the of the application. Uh, email, um, we are currently, go it is a bit too small. Mm. Let's see. Oh yeah, 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 my bad, my bad. Yeah, this restarted. I guess I have to do it for, for every file I open. Um, I hope this is better. And um, yeah, so, okay, cool. So for the res, uh, we also have a, a folder named res, uh, which stands for resources. And here we have different folders. Drawables are basically shapes and figures and images. It can be a PNG or a bitmap that you're going to be using in your app. Uh, layout is really important. It, it is, uh, it contains the basic layout of your different activities or elements. Uh, this would, it's an, the, the, wait, where is it? Okay. So this right here is XML, and it will essentially be like what HTML and CSS is to web development. Um, I know it's small again. I, I just have to do it for every script I open. Um, then for meet map, uh, we basically have also PNGs, but they're basically categorized in the different uh, sizes that uh, for, for different aspect ratios for devices. Usually you store like, uh, like in this case, the launcher of the application. And uh, we also have the values folder. And here you have constant strings that will be used around your app. And the reason we store them in a separate folder and a separate file is because uh, it, it's easier for to translate your apps or to change the overall color or theme of your app. Um, so I'll open a few just to show, show them. Uh, this is by default. Uh, there's a, a primary color, a dark one, an accent. Uh, and then these are like some strings. I think it's a, yeah, it just has the name of the app. Um, but, but okay, let's, uh, let's move on. So we're gonna start for our application by focusing on the, the layout. So this is the layout and if I do this, um, you can see here how the application currently looks. So we have just a hello world right in the center. So if you all can run, uh, if, you, if you guys set it up, like set up your emulator or your device properly, you should be able to press play on the top right corner and you should be able to run the app and, and see it. So install successful and uh, uh, it's a, at an, uh, it's supposed to be a blank project, a blank activity. So you should all see this. Which file is this? Um, this is the the activity underscore main dot XML. It's the layout file by default. I don't think I could zoom the files as far as I know, um, but it should be right here. Let me bring out the picture again and let me go back. So right here in the, in the, here, you will find it under layout. Uh, regardless, you should be able to press the, the play button right here the, uh, and run the app. It doesn't matter which script file you have open. So if, if anyone can confirm that they're able to get to the screen and run the app. Okay. Uh, this this uh, workshop is gonna be recorded and published later and uh, if if anything, you you guys feel free to uh, ping me on Discord and and I'll try to we, we can follow up. Um, so yeah, uh, I'm gonna minimize this and so we're gonna go over what the the how you 
program your layouts um, on Android. So essentially, um, there are different uh, layout views, which are containers. That would, they would be the equivalent of where a div is in, in web development. And uh, some of the most common ones are like a linear layout, relative layout, and a constraint layout. We won't go over the constraint layout because it's a bit uh, advanced. It's, it's a newer one. And uh, yeah, so I, I think with the relative layout, uh, we can achieve a lot and, and it's, a, it's a high reward experience. So we'll focus on that. Additionally to layout views, uh, a, a view per se, like by itself, is just the basic building block for all the user interface components that uh, you can have in Android. Um, They're represented by an XML tag, as you can see here. For example, the hello world that we see, it's a, a text view. And it has attributes um, that describe its position and, and appearance. So you can see here that the text is set to hello world. Um, okay. And um, you have buttons, uh, edit text. You can see actually most of them if you, yeah, if you open the, the palette the, here, you can see a bunch of them. <clears throat> there's also image views, uh, scroll views, there's switches and, and widgets and, and more stuff that we can play with. Um, so how, how do you know which attributes to modify? I know it's very overwhelming at first, at least it was for me. Um, you can go to the official Android docs and there you'll see, you, you literally, if you Google, for example, text view Android, you'll get the, the first link will be the docs. And uh, you'll be able to see all the attributes that the element has. If you click on them, you'll be able to see a description of what it does and the parameters that it takes. For example, align parent to button, bottom. Um, if true, makes the bottom edge of this view match the bottom edge of the parent. So right here, but that is for a relative layout. And by default, as you can see here, we have, let me zoom in. Uh, we have a constraint layout. So we're gonna change this to a relative layout. Um, so highlight it and just type relative layout with uh, a capital R and it will auto complete for you. Make sure that the closing tag is also a relative layout. You can see that, uh, the hello world actually flew to the to the top left, and that's because that's the default for a relative layout. Um, we are, the, and it's because we're using uh, these attributes, which only work for a constraint layout. It's not going to ca cause an error, but it's not going to make any effect. Um, so we're just going to get rid of that and. Uh, as you can see, if I start typing, um, the, let's see, what was the, the attribute? We're, we're going to play with align parent uh, bottom. So if I st start typing align, I get recommendations of, of that match my what I'm typing. Uh, so align parent button, uh, you can press tab, and it will autocomplete. And it will even prompt you with uh, the possible arguments. Uh, so let's say true. You're going to see immediately that the hello world just flew to the bottom of the page. I only see the right panel. No code for activity manifest. I'm not sure if I understand. Um, oh, I see. I see what you mean. Yeah. yeah. So, so here in in the in the right in the top right, you you can see the dif different views. Uh, code is just a code. You have split, and then there's also design, which only shows you this. And then you can play with the panel and just do it. It's obviously not the the fastest approach, but I, I, sometimes it's useful. Um, so yeah. Um, so now let's. Uh, what we're gonna do is we are going to start our to do list. So for that, we're gonna need this to be a button. So as you can see, I just wrote button and auto completed that. We're gonna change the hello world. Just gonna change that real quick to a add entry. We can add padding and margin just like in web development. Um, we use DP, which is uh, pixel density, and it, what it does is that the size will be relative, um, and it would uh, will be the same size regardless of how many pixels a specific device has. So I recommend always using DP. You can use other measures, but DP is the way to go. 
um, view 16. And actually, I don't want that to be padding. I want that to be margin. Um, now we're also going to have, uh, so this is the, remember that your, your button has to be closed. Um, you do this with a, a slash and then the, the closing uh, bracket. We're going to add an edit text. You know what, additionally, I wanted to show you, you can also like look for it here in the, in this, uh, the palette. And, uh, I, I think this is a little harder, but, uh. You can look for it and then just like drag and drop it, right? I can't find it, but I know it's here somewhere. <laughs> I'm shooting myself in the foot right here. Um, but yeah, I'm pretty sure you can you can just like drag and drop. You see, and it, it'll auto complete and put the coding here. But uh, but yeah, let's do an edit text. I'll just get rid of this for now. An edit text will be a little. A box where the user can actually uh, put an input, a string input. Uh, we're gonna say wrap content. We're gonna say match parent actually, because we want it to, we want the width to occupy the whole screen, so it stretches from one end to the other end. Uh, the the height is gonna be uh, wrapped. It's gonna wrap around the the text. Now, this is the cool thing about. Um, Let's also, I'm just going to copy this attribute right here because I want to align it to the bottom. And he, you see the, the edit text right here. Uh, this is the cool thing about a relative layout. Um, I can say that I also give it a margin of 16 dp. And then I can position the elements relatively to each other. So let's give the button an ID so we can reference it. You do this by just typing ID and then just tab to autocomplete and then tab again to add that at plus ID. And then we're gonna call this uh, add, add button. Um, now we can reference it here. So I'm gonna say that I want my edit text to be uh, to this end of, yeah, layout to end of the add button. So as you can see here, it immediately uh, placed itself to, to the end of the uh, button. There's a red line, which is an error or warning, and it says to support older versions, uh, you should also add, and it's suggesting something. I'm just gonna click on the suggestion. It's adding another attribute uh, that is uh, useful for older versions of Android. Uh, this is like an, in the new way of doing things but it did it for me, so uh, we shouldn't worry about it. <clears throat> now, um, we are going to uh, give this a background color. So to do that, I'm gonna create a relative layout, uh, so an additional relative layout. Keep in mind that uh, there has to be a root to your XML. Um, Right now, my root is the relative layout. There cannot be two siblings in the file. There has to be, so all the elements have to be encapsulated in a single container. So this new relative layout, it's gonna grab the button and the edit text and it will have a background color. So I'm gonna do a relative layout. I'm gonna wrap all the content. Uh, actually, I'm just gonna match the parent for the width. but it takes uh, the full uh, width of the screen. We're gonna wrap the, the, the height and then we're gonna give this an ID and call it, um, let's call it a container. You know what, let's call it bottom container. We're gonna place it in the bottom. And um, let's not forget to close it. So uh, we close it like this. And uh, I'm just gonna copy this tag and put it in the, uh, right here. So it, it takes, it engulfs the button and the edit text. Uh, I'm missing the, the little bracket, there you go. And this should be indented. Now uh, I'm gonna change the background color. There is an attribute called background. I know at first it's a bit like weird to just like, how do I know what to type? Um, it's mainly checking the docs or just like reading online. 
but it will come as second nature. You just literally type background, tab, it auto-completes. And then we can use uh, either the presets that we already have predefined in the, the values folder that I showed earlier, or we can also do an, at Android, and then Android has like some colors that they define for us. We can also put a hex code and, and just do our co uh, custom color. But let's just use uh, the, the primary color. Now, the, the whole thing changed and uh, that is not supposed to happen. So we are going to figure out why. I so, Okay, so it is because by default, as I said before, the relative layout uh, defaults to the top left. So this is defaulting there and then the button and the edit text are pulling it to the bottom because they are the ones aligned to the bottom. So what I'm gonna do is I'll remove the alignment from them and they'll rise up. Now I'll move the whole container down. And um, uh, parent bottom, true, there you go. Now there, there's additional things we can do for just to make this look better. We're gonna add a hint to our edit text. Um, we're not going to be doing backend, so this is uh, fully just an Android app that, that has no connection to to the internet. It, it'll just like work locally, yeah. Um, but if if you want to know about like good backend technologies for like a quick app, maybe for like shell hacks or something, uh, feel free to ping me afterwards. Um, I got some suggestions. Um, okay, so for the hint, uh, we're gonna type um, enter text. Can change the, the hint color uh, we can make it let, let's make it just like android white i guess and that that doesn't look like a hint so we'll just gray it out a bit you can tap on the on the little color square uh and then you also get this you can even like customize it uh, manually there you go that looks better and um yeah so there goes that um let's try to run this So it's a uh, building. Let's see. All right. So you can see uh, we have our button. We can press it. We have the edit text. We can like type stuff. Uh, also, let's make that uh, text white. And uh, let's also make it so that it is forced. Uh, to be a single line, I think I can do this by saying max lines. Wait, or is it? Uh, yeah. Okay. Um. That we can uh, hot refresh and like the app doesn't have to like fully build again, and we can see the changes applied. So you just press on the little um arrow that has the the A. So you can see our text is now white. Um, all right, now moving on, we are going to, what we're gonna do is first, we're, we're gonna create a simple text view right here and we're gonna make it so that when we press the add entry, whatever the user has uh, typed will be set, like the that text view is gonna be set to that. So let's just create that text view real quick. Um, it's outside of that container, it's just gonna be here in this area. So we are gonna wrap, we're gonna, sorry, I keep mixing that. We're gonna actually uh, match the parent. We're gonna wrap the content for the height. Uh, let's give this an ID of uh, single, single entry. And uh, for the text, just so we can see it here, we can actually, so if you, if you use tools, instead of Android for a specific parameter, we're able to visualize it without actually applying it. So we're just gonna do tools, text, and we're gonna say uh, example. There you go. Um, let's add some padding to that, uh, margin to that, I mean. Let's do 16 dp. And let, let's make that bigger actually. So we can do size. Um, 
Let's make that 20 DP. I think that looks good. Okay. And let's close that bracket. So I, I hope uh, we're all on the same page. Um, we're gonna be moving on to the uh, to the code. So if if you all can navigate to the main activity, um, that is if, if you can recall that is in the uh, in the Java folder um, inside the first package. Uh, the other two packages that are created by default are for testing purposes. So you don't, you don't have to worry about them. You just make sure to look for your main activity file in the, the main uh, my application package. So it'll look like this. And uh, this onCreate method is given to us by default. It is uh, It corresponds to the activity lifecycle of Android. Uh, we, we're not going to go in depth on them, but, but just know that there are methods that we can override uh, uh, sort of like on resume, um, on, on return to activity, and, and each pertains to the different things that you would normally do on your phone. Like uh, you can, there's a, a listener for when you resume the app from, from coming back from sleep mode, from, you know, uh, minimizing the app, from changing to another activity within the app, and so on. Um, can someone send me the XML? Um, I could try to copy paste it in, in there. Um, <laughs> uh, let me see. I don't know if this is just gonna be smooth, but uh ah uh, yeah I can't do it. it. It goes over the limit of of I don't know. I don't know what, what I was thinking. Um all right. Um <clears throat> so let's go to the main activity. Um yeah, I tried uh, Tania, but like it, it goes over. There's a 500 word limit per message, and it goes over it by by a substantial amount. Okay, so so on on our own create, this is literally the first function that that gets run like that runs when we enter this activity. And this activity, if we look at our manifest, is lit literally the first thing that that we go to. Here you can see uh, that we add activity is the main activity. So when we open the app, it will go to the main activity instantly. So this is the first thing that's gonna run once we run our app. We call super. Um, for those of you that are not familiar with Java, super just holds re reference to the method, the original method that is being over overridden. So we're just making sure that whatever this method was supposed to do originally still happens uh, behind the scenes. And now we can, but we can edit and add uh, additional functionality. So the first thing that happens is that we sent, set the content view to the layout in our activity main, which is what we just created. Um, it, is, it is important to note how they're referencing the activity main. They're using r.layout. So r it stands for resources, and it is basically the interface that you will have in order to access to your, your UI elements. We're going to see that now. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to create some instance variables. Um, so these will correspond to the different views that we have. So there's a Java class that matches the different elements for the user interface. So for example, we can have a button class. And we're going to ca call this add button, just how we called the other one. It doesn't have to match. It's arbitrary. But I, I think it's a good, uh, good habit to just name them in the same way. We're going to have a text to you as well, which was that one, the, the one we call single entry. We're going to have an edit text. And we're going to call it edit item. I think we didn't give it an ID, actually. Uh, we're going to need to. All right. So now um, we have to actually have these. Uh, objects, uh, these variables point to the actual objects. So we do this by using find by ID. So find by ID is a function that will uh, allow, allow us to uh, reference a specific UI component by their ID. We fit into, like this ID, we, we fit it to the function by using r.id, which is, like I mentioned before, a, 
a interface that contains all the different um, uh, uh, elements of your UI. So uh, let's do that right now. So at, let, let's, uh, let me comment so that it's clear. Uh, we're gonna declare, declare uh, the view references. Um, so the add button is gonna be equals to find view by ID. And we're gonna use r.id dot, um, and we have, you can see here all the stuff that's like in there. And you can see here that we can see our um, add button. We're gonna do that for all the, the different elements that we have. All right, so um, the next thing that we want to do is uh, is to add, attach, now that we can manipulate these, we want to attach uh, a listener for, for a tap to our button so that we can trigger the, the mechanism that's going to take that text from the edit text and place it on, on our um, text view that we have. So we do this by calling this method on it, um, set on click. It's pretty long. Set on click listener. Oh man, click listener. Go. Um, and so what we do is we declare inside. We feed it a new uh, view dot on click listener. Once you press tab, it will auto complete and give you the method that you need to override. So um, yeah. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna make a toast. So a toast is just a type of notification you've, you've got, uh, you've, you probably have seen it on, on apps before. Um, it is kind of long, um, but it's just toast dot make text, get application context. And then, th th so this is a function that will feed it the, the context of the application. Um, the context just holds uh, information of like where, where the toast is gonna be uh, l launched from. Then we put the string that we'll have is what's going to be shown to the user, and then we pa we pass a constant um, that corresponds to the the duration of the of the message. Uh, we can just that that constant is a instance variable of the toast class. It's a static instance variable, and then we just uh, call dot show on it, and it will show it. So let's just run this real quick, verify that everything's working fine. <clears throat> and, um, oh uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, item needs description is what I typed but yeah it's working you see the, the message obviously nothing is happening we'll, we're gonna work on that now so the first thing we want to do is we we're going to need a string. Um, that is what we're going to. That is what the user is going to input. Um, let's call it new entry. So we are going to uh, get the string from our edit item, which is the ID or the, the variable that holds the the reference to that uh, edit text, and um, we're going to get text. Uh, this method extracts the text into an, an object that's an edible object. I don't think the, we should worry about that. Just know that you have to call to string to transform it into a string. Now, um, we're just gonna do some, some uh, validation here. Pretty straightforward. We're just gonna say like, if the new entry is null or, um, or, if the new entry, and we're gonna just trim the new entry. So trim is a, is a string method in Java that uh, takes out the spaces uh, in the, at the start and at the end of the uh, string. Uh, if that is empty, we are going to, uh, you know, make the toast and actually say, uh, so item needs a description. 
else, we're just gonna go ahead and set that to the to the single entry text view that we we have declared. So we're gonna say single entry, but and we're gonna call this method that that is called set text, and we're gonna put as an argument the the new entry. Um, now uh, also we we want to empty the edit text so that you know it clears so that the user gets that feedback that uh, his request was processed um so we're just gonna do set text and we're just gonna set it to an empty string All right uh let's run this now just to see that it, it is working So we're gonna say hello world and let's add the entry. So you see uh, hello world pops up here. Let's change this. If we add this, it, it changes it again. Now, uh, uh, what we w actually wanna do is have a list, right? So what we're gonna have is um, a recycler view. So a recycler view, instead of a text view, a recycler view is sort of like a list view. A list view is, what the name uh, indicates is just a, a view that allows you to list elements. However, the recycler view is more efficient because it recycles all the, the panels. So it will never render something that's outside of the screen and it will just take a layout that you have predefined and rebind it with uh, fresh data corresponding to the index in a, in a collection that you might have like an array. So it requires some, some uh, ingredients like the recycler view itself on the layout um, you need data, like I mentioned, it will usually be stored in an array or, or a collection. Um, you need a layout for that single element so that the it, that will be the, the definition of how the view holder is going to look. Uh, you need a, a layout manager. These are predefined in Android. You there's a, For example, in this case, we're going to be using the linear layout manager, but there's things like a grid layout manager, which, uh, for example, Instagram uses it for like when you look at your profile and you see all the images in like a grid. Um, we're gonna need an adapter, which is what's gonna be in charge of pairing each of the entries in the array with each of the different uh, view holders and, and refreshing that data. And then we're gonna need that view holder that I've been mentioning. Uh, I know it sounds a bit like overwhelming, but uh, it'll it, it's gonna get clear um, as we go. Okay, um, yeah, okay, so that's it for the presentation, I guess. Um, let's, uh, one second, let me set this. Um, okay. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna go back to our layout and we're actually gonna get rid of the text view that we had created. We're gonna actually substitute this with a recycler view. Uh, do I have it? Uh, 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 let me see. Don't. So we actually have to uh, add the dependency. Let me see. Okay. So the, the easier way like that we can do this right now is we can go to the uh, palette right here and you'll see that the recycler view has a little download button. And if you click on that, uh, this operation requires the library Android X dot recycler view. Would you like to add this now? We're just going to press okay. And uh, it is getting that dependency and we have it now. So, so uh, to get the, the, that palette, you, I hope I'm pronouncing that right. Uh, so you uh, go to the top right corner and you see code. There's also design and split. So you're probably in the code view. Make sure to, to press split or design, and then you'll be able to see it. I believe for, for a split, it is like minimized. You'll see it here in the corner vertically. You can also go to your Gradle file um, 
and you can actually add it manually here. It, it, so make sure to open just in case some of you can't find it. Uh, the Gradle file, uh, there's two Gradle files. Make sure to open the module one and uh, you'll see it right here. Uh, there's a, uh, so you see dependencies. Oh, wait, let me zoom in. My bad. So dependencies and in close brackets, you see all the different dependencies. So this is the one we want. I'll copy it in the chat. Just make sure to uh, paste that there and uh, you'll get a pop-up asking you if you want to sync your dependencies and you'll get that. Uh, so now if we type recycler view, we should be able to see it. I, I hope, yeah, here we go. So um, we're gonna match the parent for the width and we're also gonna match the parent for the height. Now, um, okay. how do I zoom out here? Okay, cool. Now, what we want though is to make sure that this uh, recycler view sits on top of the bottom bar. So let's actually add an ID to it before I forget. Uh, I'll just call it recycler view. And uh, we're gonna say uh, above, so the layout will be above the um, bottom container. You see now that, that it is actually above it. Okay, so now we can go ahead and start working to populate this recycler view with our items. And uh, first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna head to main activity. We have an error right now because we're referencing something that doesn't exist. We deleted these uh, right now. So we're just gonna delete it from here. And we're gonna actually change that to, we don't need this anymore. So we're gonna have a recycler view. Just call it, we're just gonna call it recycler view. And uh, we're gonna set the recycler view we're just going to find it by ID. OK. Now, um, what we're going to do, wait, I have an error here. Uh, OK, we still have this. <clears throat> so what we're going to do is we are going to create a new file. So if you come here, you, you right click uh, on your main package, you're going to hover over new and uh, click on Java class. And we're just gonna create a class that we're gonna call items adapter. And so this will be responsible, like I mentioned before, for um, um, adapting the data that you will have to your view. Speaking of data, let's go back to main activity. And here we're gonna create uh, that array that's gonna hold that data. So every time the user adds a string, it will be uh, appended to an array of strings. Well, um, so yeah, we're gonna do that now. Um, I'll just do it uh, here. And uh, let's declare the items uh, right here, the array. So. Um, also, it is uh, good to, we should also make all of these private. I don't know if you guys are familiar with access modifiers in Java, but so the, the, the user or anybody using our program wouldn't need to access these, so they should be private. And uh, yeah, so let's, uh, let's do a list of uh, string and let's call it items. Yeah, we're calling it items. Cool. Oh. So now we're gonna go to our items adapter. And um, I'm wondering if I can go over time because I don't think we're gonna have enough time. Um, if, if there's any organizers in the chat, are, am I allowed to go over time? Um, okay, well, let's just go on. So the items adapter is gonna extend the recycler view. Um, class, uh, it's, it's gonna extend the adapter class that is uh, composed inside the recycler view class. And this is a generic, so we're gonna specify that it has to be of the type of items adapter um, view holder. And view, we don't have a view holder right now, um, so let's actually not, let's just leave it as a generic. 
um, we're going to uh, define our view holder in a second. So you're going to see that you get an error, and that's because this class right here is abstract. So we got to implement the method. So if you right-click uh, right it, uh, or you can press, you can hover over it, and you'll see like a little uh, suggestion. You can uh, click on implement methods, and it will do it for you. It'll give you this window. Uh, make sure that all these are checked. I would uncheck copy Javadoc, because that's just going to clutter everything. And just press OK. So we're going to get this. So important things uh, to consider. We are going to um, declare, I believe, session stay active for five minutes after the end time and then disappear. So uh, OK, so we're just going to get kicked out automatically, apparently. Uh, this is not good. Um, uh, David, could you find out with Yasmin if we could uh, extend it, if there's a way? OK. Um, thanks. So we are going to declare uh, several instance variables that are, we're going to be needing. Um, so first, we're going to need a, a, an array that will correspond to the actual adapter. So element elements of our data from from like the main activity are going to be uh, passed here as as we cycle through the through the actual recycler view let's call it elements then we're going to also need uh an unclick listener uh, i don't know if you you guys recall we attached that to the button so we're going to need that so we can tap on the different uh items and maybe in the future we're going to implement something like edit um oh my bad i keep forgetting zooming on the code i just have to do it every time i open a new file Okay, I hope this is better. Um, yeah, we're just gonna call that click listener. Then uh, when we delete an item, we wanna, to delete an item, we wanna make the, allow the user to do that by uh, long pressing on the, on the entry. So we're gonna create also a uh, on long click listener. Uh, let's call it long click listener. Now, uh, in order to pass uh, this, uh, the click listener and the long click listener to the actual instance of the recycler view that we're going to have in main activity, we need to define an interface. Um, this is a bit confusing. Uh, I wouldn't worry too much about it. Just know that you have to declare a public interface. Um, and uh, yeah, and it's going to be the, the an on click listener. And then that, that onclick listener is going to have a method that we're going to override it when, once we get back to main activity and make it do what we want it to do once the user clicks. We're just going to call it arbitrarily on item click, and we're going to pass into it the position. So we know, we know which, which uh, element in the, in the recycler view to alter for effect. Um, We're gonna all do the same thing for the for the for the long one. On long, click listener. And we're gonna also pass in the position. Now, um, we are going to actually uh, we, we need to define a constructor uh, that we we don't have that actually. I just realized. So in Java, a constructor, you just uh, make sure it has the same signature as, as the class, so the same name. Um, and then we, we're just going to feed it the stuff that we, we're going to be needing back in main activity. So for main activity, we're going to pass the data. So that is a, a list of string that we, if you guys recall, we called it uh, items. Let's call it list elements here as the, the, the parameter. Um, we're going to have the onclick listener. And we're also going to have the on long click listener. We're just going to be able to pass all these things uh, once we get back to the main activity. And so uh, the elements, we're just going to set that. We're just going to set all the, the instance uh, attributes to the ones we're passing, essentially. Mm -hmm. A bit long click listener, yeah. 
and we have an error right here. Um, we're just going to cast it to view on long, on long click listener. Um, okay, so now let's uh, let's actually give some functionality to the methods that we are overriding. So the first thing that comes to my mind is to fix the get item count. So what we're going to do is we are going to return um, the length of the of the array. So you do this by saying uh, elements, I think is what we call it, size. There you go. Um, <clears throat> now we need to, uh, so for, for the view holder, this is going to be like a bit of boilerplate code. Um, but we basically have to make sure that the that we set the view holder to whatever layout we're using for the specific uh, entries of our day of, of our recycler view. Uh, recycler views, by the way, are a bit uh, overwhelming because they have a, a, a lot of boilerplate code, which is just like a standard. But once you're used to it, you, you essentially just even just copy paste the, the like the, the interface and then just fill it with what you need. So I wouldn't worry too much about this being a little messy. Um, I promise it. It's very. It becomes simple, and it shouldn't scare any of you from from like Android. Um, apparently, we can stay in the session as long as we want. The session disappears from the session page after, but we will not be kicked. Okay, so everyone that's already here can stay here, basically. Okay, I'll I'll try to speed it up. Um. um okay. So. Uh, let's just, so I'm declaring a view, which is just the inflated element. Uh, inflating means just like rendering that uh, layout. So we, we called uh, all these methods from these classes. Um, like I, I mentioned, don't worry about it. It's it's just basically boilerplate code. Um, we're getting the context. So we're passing that there. Then we're going to inflate this. And we are going, so here's an important part. Uh, when we call dot inflate, what we're feeding to this function is uh, the actual layout that we want to use for that uh, for each of our entries. Um, since we're running out of time, we're just going to use Android has like if you remember I mentioned before that you can do art dot and then you can say like layout and then like specify your your layouts that you have, or you can say ID and specify IDs. But you can also use the resources that are default on Android. So you can say Android dot R dot um, Layout, for example, I I think I need to uh, import this. I I don't. That's not good. Why isn't it there? Um. Pretty sure I got imported some somewhere. Um. I do see the stuff though. Simple list. So we're gonna use the simple list item one. That is just a, a simple uh view that has a text uh view inside. So we're just gonna use that for now. Um. And we're also going to pass the parent. I think we need to pass the context, do we? Um, I think this is good. Uh, I know there, OK, yeah, there, there's a separate parameter uh, if you want to attach it to the root. Uh, to be honest, I'm not sure what that does, but uh, set it to false. All right. Um, so view holder, um, we are going to so it's not the recycler view holder, it's just view holder. The thing is we haven't declared that yet and that's what we're gonna do right now. So element holder, and then we're just gonna uh, declare a new view holder that we're gonna pass the, the inflated element. So that view holder is gonna have that layout that we're using uh, the default that I previously stated. And uh, so we're getting an error because we don't have the class of course. If we do show context actions, it will uh, prompt us to create the class. Um, it's trying to create it somewhere else, so don't do it like that. Um, create inner class is what we want. So we're gonna have this right here, and now we can uh, we can actually call uh, super. Wait, I need to overwrite this. Uh, um, yeah, so so this has to actually extend the, the the recycler view holder that we were like it was prompting us earlier so recycler view um view holder and now it's going to tell us to implement uh we need a constructor that is right okay um yeah 
So this is basically what's where we're gonna uh, define what's gonna happen when we are binding the the elements. So what we're gonna do is we are going to uh, declare a text view right here. Uh, that text view is gonna be the text view that's inside uh, this uh, default simple list item that we specified earlier. So this is just an arbitrary name. Let's call it text view to element. And uh, so we're going to do it right here in the constructor. We're going to set the text view element to item. Uh, the item view. And then we're going to find view by ID, which is here. And we're just going to, uh, we have to uh, call this ID from the default Android resources. Make sure to uh, type Android before the R. And I believe it's, yeah, text one. All right, and now the, the other thing we have to do is we have to declare the binding method that we're gonna be using. Um, public bind and uh, public void bind. We're gonna have feed it the, the, the text element. So this text element is gonna is gonna be the one that's gonna get replaced every time as the user scrolls. And uh, we so before continuing with the bind, let's see where we're gonna call the the bind method. So we need to do that on the on bind view holder. So every time that uh, a new view is binded, you I know it's it sounds a bit abstract, but you'll see what I mean once we have it set. Um, as you scroll, every time a new view of the list item pops up, it's going to get rebinded with the with the fresh data. So, what we're going to do is we're going to say uh, we're going to find the holder first. Um, so it's going to be a string that we're going to be manipulating and and, and rebinding, uh, and we're going to get that from the elements array that we have, and we're going to just uh, index the that element that corresponds to the position of the of the list item. So we're gonna get the position. Uh, what's the function? Uh, oh, oh, it's just get. Okay, cool. And uh, yeah, so now all we have to do left is uh, grab the holder and bind the text element to it. The holder. I need to. I'm not declaring this. Oh, it's here. It's actually a, so I, I just made a mistake. If you see here, we're using the recycler view dot view holder, but we want to use the view holder that we are declaring down here. So we got to make sure to remove this. And remove it from here as well. There you go. So now we got that. Um, so now let, let's uh, keep working on our bind function. So. What's gonna happen every time we see a new uh, a, a new view comes into the screen is that we're gonna set the text. So this is just that text view that that we defined here. That's just getting set to the default Android text one of that uh, simple layout that we're using. And we're gonna call set text, um, and we're just gonna pass that uh, text element. Now, um, the other, so what else do we need to bind? So besides the actual string content of that uh, entry, we also need to uh, bind the on-click listeners so that each of the items in the list is tappable. So we do this by saying uh, text view element, and then we're gonna set, just like we did with the button at the start. So we're just gonna set on-click listener. And uh, as we type, uh, as as we type, um, new, uh, uh, yeah, new, on click, we should see it pop up. There you go. You press tab, it auto completes. Um, and then we should do the same thing for the on long click listener. So set on long click listener, new, on long click listener. Uh, so when we uh, click on on this one, we should. Uh, get the the adapter position so uh we're just gonna get 
the oops get adapter what does bind do did you just tune into the workshop are you late um click listener um my bad on item click listener that should on item click i think that's what we called it um we are having some issues in here um <clears throat> adapter position and uh we'll see what what's going on why is it crying solve so why are we calling it uh oh and, okay so that is because we never uh, really extended the generic of the adapter so the the generic type will be of the view holder that we declared down there so right now it's probably using the default one so item adapt items adapter but view holder now uh it'll probably have uh, uh, uh nope 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 i think it's because that then the view holder oh man is extending the wrong class uh, up, up, up. yeah it has to be a public interface i think it's, it's because it's got to be public right to be able to get it um let's see real quick what's going on yeah because i think it's got a yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I i don't know why i'm saying uh, public like if it was a method um that this should work now okay and then on on click is what I called it. I think I called it on click, did I? What did I call it? Uh, on item click. Still not getting it. Uh, 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 uh. This is not good. Um, I probably have a bug somewhere. Um, bear with me, we'll figure it out. Um, text view element set on click listener and uh, you let's see what happens if I try it on this one. Long click listener on long click at adapter position i wonder why it's the wrong one because it's not called on long click it's kill it's called long click listener what did i do <laughs> oh uh well this is missing a return statement we gotta return the element holder first of all but i don't think that was the issue though um so what we need to do on item click we have the right class This is embarrassing. Um, but we'll see, we'll see what is happening. Why is it not on item click? It's, it's literally called on item click. Get adapter position. Should work. We need to view. Oh my God. Are we 
are we reference this right uh click listener oh oh man it's because i'm casting them to view dot on click listener uh okay so we gotta change this real quick and uh yes so we're using the default uh unclick listener instead of using uh the one we we're declaring here on the interface you see that for example this one's grayed out because we're not using it um so that can happen when you have like similar names um so it it just takes some time to debug i guess um so yeah let's just i just like right click and and click on change the field so i remove the the uh how this was being uh called from another package instead we're using the, the local ones um and so we are gonna pass here the long click listener. Yeah. So yeah, so now long there you go. Okay. Um hopefully I didn't lose too many of you. <laughs> um okay, so now uh let's move on. I uh so that's that's everything that we need for our adapter. We have everything um that is needed now we're just gonna uh make sure to instantiate it in our main activity so we're gonna return to the main activity and uh we already have our uh list of items that we're gonna be uh adding to now we're also gonna declare that adapter we're gonna instant so we're gonna make a variable so we can instantiate it there um so it's an items adapter that's what we call the file and the class uh, is gonna do, uh instantiated uh on the on create method um yeah let's just do this we can do it right here yeah this is good so items adapter is equals to we're gonna equals that to uh, i think first we need to uh set the the on click listeners uh but but we'll we'll just reorganize it later um so new items adapter and now we're gonna feed the things that that we're need we're needing for the constructor right so what we need is a uh a list of strings so an on click listener and a on long click listener so we're just gonna pass the uh list of strings that we have here which uh where we're putting our data which is items so that's gonna be our first argument we're gonna pass in uh, a long a click listener and a long click listener. So that's what I what I was uh, worried about. Uh, so we gotta actually declare those before so we can pass them. Um, and uh, yeah, so we're almost uh, we're close to getting some results. I know it, it's been some while since we we've run any code. So yeah, so uh, it is the interface that we've declared on on the on the items adapter. So we can just call it here. And we're just gonna instantiate it. And remember we have like uh we have a we have an abstract method uh that we have to actually um overwrite. So items and once we just uh tap it will auto complete. Um so yeah, so right here we're just gonna make a toast for now. Uh, ideally, for the for the click listener, what we want to want to do, if we had more time, is just to make it so that we can tap into the item and maybe make edit edit and changes to it. But right now, we're just gonna uh, print a toast that says like item in the position was tapped. Again, a toast is just that little message. Uh, you got to call a method called make text. Is is like I'm, I've mentioned before. Is like some boilerplate code. Um, make sure to get the context, and uh, yeah, just the string you want and the duration. So now uh, we, we, yeah, uh, I think that is good. Um, now uh, we also need to do the same thing for the long click listener. I think I'm, I'm just gonna copy and paste this code and just change it a bit. Uh, click listener, click listener, and uh, on long click listener, we gotta overwrite a different method. Uh, and uh, we'll just get rid of this this one. We're not using it <clears throat> now. Uh, so for for the long one, uh, I mentioned that what we want to do is that when we long press the the entry on the on the list, it deletes it. So uh, we are going to uh, 
we could extract it into a method, I guess. Uh, let's say delete item. And so we're, 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 what we need in order to locate that item and actually delete it is the, the position of the item in the, in the array. We also need the, the adapter. And uh, yeah, so I'm, I'm also gonna print a toast. Actually, I'm just gonna do that for now. Um, and then uh, we'll say like, like uh, item would be deleted, just so we, so we see that it's working. Let's, let's try to run this. I, I have an error though, oh, we're gonna check that. Uh, items adapter, okay. Yeah, so this is where we stayed off when we started declaring this listeners. We actually have to pass them now. So we're gonna pass our on click listener. Then we're gonna pass our long click listener. There you go. Now we should be able to run this and hopefully we're not gonna have any uh, major bugs. <clears throat> So I, I know uh, it's getting long. Um, we'll, we'll probably cut it uh, short at some point. Um, and uh, feel free to ping me if, if you are uh, doing any Android app for your project or, or have any questions. Uh, I'll be more than happy to, to answer. Um, yeah, so we, we don't have an add method actually to be able to test this out. Um, we have to create the add method. Um, but uh, th that's, that's not gonna take uh, too long. And uh, one thing that I, that I actually wanted to mention before is uh, the log cat. The log cat is basically where you can see your logs um, of the app running. And uh, it is very useful to debug and, and find like actual errors on the code when stuff isn't working. Um, we'll, we'll test it in a second, but let's, uh, let's go on and just add the, the add and delete methods. And then we'll, we'll just call it a day. Um, or we'll call it, yeah, just, well, I'll take a break probably. Um, so yeah, uh, let's let's define those um, methods to add and delete. Actually, we're gonna do this outside of our on create, and then we're just gonna call the, the function uh, back in there. So we're just gonna make it protected. It could, I think it could be private. I don't think we'll ever use this outside. Um, okay. So we're gonna add the item, and so we're gonna need the new item. That's what the user is gonna type in. We're gonna need uh, uh, the adapter, right? Um, that is the 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 items adapter. Items adapter. Where is the items adapter? Mm. Oh, it's cap capital I items adapter. <clears throat> there you go. Um, yeah. So we're gonna move uh, this right here that we were doing. Uh, we're gonna actually cu uh, cut it out. Gonna paste it here in the add, uh, and then we're just gonna call add in here. So we're gonna add the item, um, and we're gonna pass the uh, whatever is in the in the text edit text. So we need the edit text edit item dot get to string. All right. Um, now we're doing the validation in here. What is happening? Oh yeah, I also need the adapter. There we go. And uh, yeah, so now um, let's let's make the delete method. private uh, void uh, del delete item. And then we're gonna pass the position of the item we wanna delete and we also gotta pass our items adapter. And uh, what we're gonna do is we are actually gonna remove the item from the position in the in the array. So this is a, a like this is a built-in method from from the array list. It's gonna allow us to do that. Um, and then one thing we need to do is we gotta not notify the adapter uh, that we are actually that we have actually like deleted a an item 
you see all these built-in methods that, that notify the adapter. Uh, they are accompanied by, by a cool animation in Android. So definitely use that. Uh, remove, notify item removed. Yeah, here it is. And then we're just gonna pass the position so that it knows from where to take it out of. I have something here, identify, oh. <clears throat> Forgot the name. Okay, cool. Cool, cool, cool. Um, so now we are actually, uh, we are, so I forgot to actually add the item here, items to the array, add new item. And uh, we're gonna notify the adapter in the same way that uh, the, an item has been inserted. Uh, inserted, there we go. And then, um, so every time we add an item, it is added to the end of the list. So the position will always be the size of our array. Items dot size uh, minus one, right? And then we we're setting the we're gonna set the edit text to to empty. Um, <clears throat> so this should work. Uh, let me just make sure. Uh, Let's just run it. We got nothing to lose. Okay. Hello. And nothing's showing. Um, I think we are missing something. Um, add item. Let's see. Mm -mm. Am I calling at, uh, oh, we're, we're never calling these. Um, where's that, my on-click listener? For the add button here. Add item, we are passing the string. Mm -mm. Oh, okay, okay, I see what's happening. Um, just call this new entry. Um, so in add item here, where is it? Right here. Yeah, we're, we're doing edit item, uh, get text to strings here. So we were doing that uh, basically twice. <clears throat> and we're not getting anything yet uh, oh man let's see what is going on now um, I'm pretty I'm, I'm sure I'm missing something silly uh there's just probably a flaw in my logic. Um, so we're adding the item that's on the on the edit item. We run add item. We add it to the array, and we notify something has been inserted. Um, Let's see why I troubleshoot this real quick. Uh, let me see if I add button. I'm I'm messing something up in 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 this logic right here. Uh, it, it should work. I'm just gonna uh, move the uh, I'm just gonna move the the method. I'm gonna extract it out of of that uh of the separate add. Uh, I'll just like put it here. I'll just remove it from here. Um, I'm just doing this because I don't think we. Ha I would love to debug it, but I don't think we have time. Um, so this should work. Um. 
Now for the delete, we're not calling delete item, and that is on the on long click listener, which is. Let's just uh, test this one out. <clears throat> We're building. What is going on? This is tragic. This is tragic. Um, uh, things like this happen. Um, yeah, it's it just it just takes some time to debug. Um, I think did I oh my god okay so okay so this is what's happening so I, I never set the the items adapter I have to uh, I completely went over and skipped uh, setting the, the layout manager um, so that is probably what's happening so I, I am passing the the actual string correctly so what we need to do is we need to uh, actually uh, get the recycler view and set the adapter and then pass in uh, the adapter that, that we have that we have instantiated. <clears throat> now uh, we also have to set, uh, set the, the layout manager. As I mentioned before, we we're going to use a linear layout manager. So it has a there's a method called layout manager set layout manager, and then we're just going to pass the new linear manager. Oh, okay. So now we have our adapter, we have our layout manager, and we are correctly passing that string, um, adding it adding it to the items uh, collection that we have, and then we are, uh, let's notify the adapter, um, items adapter, and we're gonna notify, I had done this before, but I, I erased it, uh, notify that the item inserted, and like we mentioned, uh, the place where it's gonna be inserted is at the end, so that is items uh, size, Minus one. All right. So we're building. Let's see. Oh, and we just crashed. This is not good. Oh my god. Uh, no pointer exception and line forty nine. Uh, items adapter. We have an items adapter. Do we have a recycler view? We don't. Okay. Uh, it just happened. So we were using the recy we were referencing the recycler view before we actually find it by ID. So all the, uh, so all this, just move it. And it has to happen after that. It happens. It happens. Uh, th th thanks for uh, thank you for for all those that are like sticking through. Um, I know it, it's been a long workshop. I think I'm I'm overdue by 30 minutes. Uh, uh, this, please run. Okay, so it works. <laughs> and now if we add uh, more stuff, it's just gonna add uh, in there. Now, last thing we're gonna do is we're gonna make sure that delete function works. Um, and uh, we're just gonna grab uh, delete and make sure we're running this in the uh, uh, like I said, I'm just gonna do it directly. I'm not gonna abstract the methods. Um, and uh, when when we have a long press, so that is when we have a long press of right here. Item would be deleted. So we're just gonna remove it from that position that we're getting back from from the inter interface, and then we're gonna notify the adapter. And then yeah, okay, cool. And then if we tap on it, we get the. Uh, we get the little notification that says uh what the number i actually never showcased that um okay 
So test hack. Okay, so if we tap on these, uh, we we do get item in position zero tapped, item in position three tapped. So we, we do get the corresponding position. So if we long press, we should be able to delete the item. And you can see that that is working. Um, so yeah, I think I'm going to cut it here. Uh, I, I had prepared to also uh, make some uh, persistence using uh, a text file and, and locally. But uh, yeah, if, if you guys are interested, uh, for those of you that are still here, uh, feel free to ping me on Discord and, and I'll gladly help. Thank you all. Peace.